clickbait thumbnails trigger warnings oh my welcome back to my channel here folks if you're watching this video you are either a hardcore fan or you're a troll or you're kind of both honestly trolls if you think my team doesn't see you race into the comment section within the first 15 minutes every single time i post just to spew vitriol you're lying to yourself we see you and we think you're very special members of the abby's kitchen community thanks for the ad rev but anyways today i'm going to be addressing some of the criticism i sometimes get about my clickbait titles and thumbnails along with a really important chat about trigger warnings so let's start there actually. So my husband doesn't really watch my content, but when he has, his only commentary is something like, oh my God, it must be so exhausting to have to have all these trigger warnings and content notes and preemptive disclaimers about words that you're saying or not saying before you can actually get into what it is that you need to talk about. Like, why is everybody so sensitive? And honestly, I've always just kind of ignored his comments because I was like, ah, oh, yeah, typical man dismissing the lived experience and trauma of so many women who've entrusted me in their safe care. Then more recently, maybe like a year or so ago, I was talking to my younger sister and my sister is a clinical psychologist. And she told me that trigger warnings on media content may actually do more harm than good. And again, at the time I was like, well, yeah, maybe that's true for your content or your audience, but my peeps need these trigger warnings. Like there's so much toxic content out there online. It's the f***ing wild west out there and I need to protect people. But then I was on vacation this summer, trying to like fake vacation as we do. And this article popped up on my Apple news feed. And I was like, oh f have I actually caused more harm by trying so hard to keep, you know, everybody happy and safe? I'm going to leave a link to the article below, though it does have a paywall. But in short, this op-ed draws on recent research suggesting that trigger warnings have actually little or no benefit in cushioning the blow of disturbing content. And in some cases, they may actually be harmful for survivors of trauma. Basically, the researchers found that trigger warnings increase the extent to which people see trauma as central to their identity, which can be counter therapeutic because it encourages avoidance and exacerbates fear. The researchers said that trigger warnings are one of many examples of ways that we overemphasize how important trauma should be in our lives and that this prevents us from moving onwards and upwards. There's also a whole other meta analysis looking at trigger warning outcomes that found that presenting a trigger warning had actually no effect on emotional response to negative materials. But in a lot of cases, it increased anticipatory anxiety about the incoming content. Like people get their guard up and it's like they're triggered before they've even consumed the content that might trigger them. It also found that the warnings either made people want to read the content more or it had no effect at all. Generally speaking though, it seemed clear that trigger warnings aren't actually great. So I called up my sister again and what she said really spoke to me. She said that basically today, it's kind of a bit of a landmine to explicitly say that you don't like or you don't use trigger warnings because then you seem really non-progressive, which is probably why I've kept them in rotation for so long. Because as you guys know, I'm a sensitive person. So I really try to treat others with sensitivity as well. But my sister basically said that trigger warnings run counter to everything we know about improving mental health. Because the more that we avoid something because of a past memory of it being scary or bad, then the more scary that memory becomes. It basically adds fuel to the fire. It also teaches us that we're weak and fragile or incapable of coping or growing. You know, there was actually a comment on my recent video about my UK trip, which got me thinking about this all over again. And this person said that people with EDs don't have the impulse control when it comes to weight loss content. And that may be true for some, but it also got me thinking, why are we by default thinking that folks who have struggled with their mental health are incapable or weak? Why are we automatically taking away people's agency by saying, no, 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 no. I know people like you. You can't handle anything that's scary or hard. Because when people hear that, they think that's true. Now, I will just say that, of course, if you're in the active throes of an ED, then discuss with your team on whether or not you should be consuming online content at all, never mind nutrition or wellness content. But eventually, we come out of active treatment and we need to face the world. And let's be honest, the whole world talks about weight loss, right? It pops up on your For You page. It's at the magazines at the checkout. Your relatives talk about it at the dinner table. Like, sure, you could leave the store every time you saw a magazine with the words keto on the front page and you could hide in the bathroom every single time you're at a family gathering, but that doesn't support ongoing recovery. We need to eventually build skills 
to face this world with confidence. So this is where I bring all of you guys in. Like we've got options, right? I continue adding trigger warnings to all of my videos. So for any mention of weight, body, food, nutrition tips, everything, I can not have trigger warnings for anything. And people can listen to my introduction at the start of the video to see what we're gonna be talking about. And then, you know, of course, assume that there will be some nutrition or diet talk in most of my videos. Or I can be selective where perhaps I don't share trigger warnings for most things like diet, food, nutrition tips, weight loss or weight gain, but maybe just for more sensitive discussions, like if there are explicit pro ED tips a creator is sharing, or if I'm sharing specific weight or measurements. But pause this video right now and let me know in the comments where, if anywhere, you think I should draw the line. So that's trigger warnings. Now I wanna talk about clickbait. This is such a hot topic in my content creator circles. And it's something that a lot of us get criticism for or struggle with what to do. So clickbait is a controversial marketing tactic because its job is to entice someone to click and watch or read the content. But when the content itself is like a complete mismatch with the title, people feel misled or like they wasted their time. So for example, if the title of a magazine article said how to lose 20 pounds in 20 days, but the journalist actually just ended up talking about intermittent fasting where one random person happened to lose 20 pounds in 20 days, but all the experts they interviewed said, no, you can't lose 20 pounds in 20 days. Yeah people will be disappointed because they didn't find out how to lose a pound a day. It's also often criticized for spreading myths or disinformation because people will often just read the article title and not the rest of the article. And again, often the title lacks context or nuance or the whole truth. So an article titled Berberine works better than chemo could automatically lead people to stop their chemo to buy Berberine without reading an article that would obviously suggest that Berberine is not better than chemo. Unless it's from like a BS blog, in which case it's the wild west. So here's the deal with my clickbait. Yes, my team and I use the psychology of clickbait when crafting our titles. Clickbait psychology suggests that our brains are primed for confirmation bias and simplicity. There are literally millions of pieces of content flying at us every day. Our brains will automatically stop and pick up the pieces that are instantly recognizable, uncomplicated, and relatable. The video itself is for the context and the complicated details. The title has to be snappy. It has to deliver a quick message that hints towards the content within, but also be emotion driven and human because you are human and I am human and this is how we connect. Now, as an example, I got a lot of criticism about my video title on my UK vlog, which was originally, did I lose too much weight, food and diet while traveling abroad? Some people criticize this title for being clickbait. And while it may be clicky, and it may be baity, I don't see it as being dishonest or the spreading of misinformation. Vlogs are generally a bit chaotic, so I talk about a lot of things in this one, but one of the central themes for me in this video that I felt would be most useful for my audience was about how to deal with unintentional weight loss. I could have also titled this like I saw a ghost because I have a little section where I talk about ghosts. I could have called this London shopping hall because I had a little fashion moment in there. But for me, this weight loss angle was what I felt would be most useful for my audience. And if I baited in my followers with eating disorder histories, then great. They would be taking away a supportive message that they really need that weight loss shouldn't always be celebrated and that it's sometimes an act of self care to eat more and try to gain weight. And that is what I try to do with my titles and content. I hope that people realize that it's really hard to compete with sensationalized diet culture. When one creator posts a video called this supplement will make you lose 10 pounds today. And I post a video called this supplement may help support weight loss when taken four times a day in conjunction with a balanced diet and exercise regimen, which are people going to click on? The latter may be full of misinformation, whereas at least my video will deliver the facts, but no one is going to learn those facts if they don't click. We've actually beta tested so many video titles and found that if we want my supportive science driven message to get to the people who actually need it, you gotta fight fire with fire. You need to build snappy, emotion driven, simple titles. And that means you leave the context to the video itself. That said, I'm still truthful in my titles. So for example, I will ask questions rather than make absolute statements. And my title still reflects the content within. I get that people are still mad when you click on a title thinking, oh, she's finally gonna give us some magic bullet for weight loss. And here I am sharing the like not so sexy science again. But 
These are typically the kind of people who need the cold hard truth that most wellness culture content is BS. The bottom line is that if we as a community want to share science, not pseudoscience, as broadly as we can to the people who need to hear it the most, we need to play ball. Like, I'm up against 20 pounds in 20 days kind of so just, just work with me on this. Finally, let's talk thumbnails. So I get some flack for my thumbnails, particularly if I share images of bodies or again, anything that might be triggering. Again, the original thumbnail of my UK vlog is a really good example. On it, I wrote, I'm triggered. And I had an image of myself looking kind of distraught. And people in the comments were suggesting that me saying I'm triggered was making people triggered. So I changed it to this scared me, even though honestly, I was triggered. As for the bodies, this is super interesting because my team and I talk about this literally every week on our calls. I don't really show body check images of myself anywhere online, so my thumbnails won't contain images of me personally posing in a bikini or bra. Obviously no shame to other creators who do this, but my body is just not really my business card. That said, look at the wellness landscape. Like even the most anti-diet diet culture creators build their thumbnails around their bodies. Why? Because we live in a culture obsessed with small fit bodies and we see these bodies and we want to learn from the people behind them obviously and in a lot of cases this is not a bad thing like natasha for example great content great evidence-based advice i love her so no judgment from me to other content creators who use this tactic like go glen coco like show off that bod you know just not my style. So even though I might not share my own body, when I'm doing a response video, I often utilize the same body check imagery that they use to bait people in the first place. Because again, we sometimes need to fight fire with fire. And if the original content is problematic, then I need to attract the same vulnerable audience who most needs my safe science-minded interpretation and rebuttal. Obviously, in a perfect world, a hot body wouldn't be a greater indicator of clout than education and expertise, but this is the world that we live in right now, folks. And my team and I have beta tested this so many times. Videos without a hot body in the thumbnail, tank. Videos with a hot body, get clicks. Welcome to diet culture one-on-one. -on -one. I am not going to be able to single-handedly change the game. And at the end of the day, folks, the people who are easily influenced by clickbait titles and body checks on thumbnails are typically the ones who can benefit from my content the most. And maybe, just maybe, it will attract someone on the brink of change who will see my content and have something click, where they realize, holy shit, this whole diet culture thing is not serving me. And even if it's just that one person who gets that aha moment that sparks their healing journey, I think it's kind of worth annoying a few people because they were hoping for more diet culture and instead they got womp womp critique of diet culture. And that was a lot. But I would love to hear your thoughts on this conversation. I know this is gonna get a little spicy, so please let's keep it respectful. And remember, if you're a VIP troll, I'm watching you, everybody's watching you. <laughs> Don't think your obsession here doesn't go unnoticed. But on that note, that is all for today. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.